Uh, now yeah. we're down to the marketing guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, if, and if I would have known that uh, we had two technical CEOs in here, I wouldn't need Kelly and his team. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, uh, we you like know, I, had a, I had a couple slides here on the positioning, but David did a fantastic job on, on what the model for next gen is and how it looks like with Fusion. You know, you can deploy Flash multiple ways in a server. Um, Fusion's there. They use memory attached deployment versus an SSD behind a controller deployment. Um, then you can get into the systems world where you're supporting multiple applications or more than one physical host. Um, of course, they've got the all flash appliance model with, uh, um, uh, with ION. And now with NextGen, they've moved into the small and medium enterprise to the memory attached hybrid model. Um, and as David and John had the discussion, you know, we believe that over time these models kind of move away, leaving Fusion with the most comprehensive flash deployment model portfolio in the industry. Um, and then just at a high level, you know, positioning how, where these things fit, you know, server local flash is about improving the performance of a server or a single application. You know, it's server card and software doing the caching down to another system. Um, it goes up and down the stack enterprise to, uh, to the SME. Then you have the ION, which is really about maximum raw performance. That's the fastest performance you can get a memory appliance on the network. One to few applications is typically supporting those apps that really require high performance. Uh, you have deployment choices and how ION is rolled out, whether it's software on a platform or an appliance, um, targeted mostly at the enterprise. And then again with NextGen, the memory attached hybrid model which is really about provisioning and prioritizing performance to only those applications that need it. So this is really about multiple workloads hitting the same system at the same time and the software required to manage the workloads versus one another. Um, so that's, that's kind of the end of the uh, acquisition overview. Um, we're gonna uh, switch to a section and give you guys some insight on why NextGen, you know, we chose the hybrid model and how we see it playing out in the future in terms of all the different media types that we see. Um, so this is uh, kind of the end of the first section. Um, do we wanna, if we can roll right into the, right into the next section, Stephen? Okay. That, okay. Um, so I'm gonna go over kind of the way this is gonna work. Um, I'll go over kind of the hybrid model and then Kelly's gonna bring his team of uh, four principal architects in and they're gonna discuss some of the technical challenges that we had to bite, up, bite off to make the hybrid model work. Um, it's a very different model than a traditional disk array, and we wanted to put you guys in front of the principal engineers that have kind of dealt with these challenges. So that's how it's going to flow the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the time that we have. And we're going to try to get done about 10 to 15 minutes early. I know you guys got a tight time schedule to leave right at 10. Um, we'd like to give you a tour of the data center, and then we've got some goodies for you out front. So uh, hopefully we'll get done about 10 minutes early and we'll be able to do that. Did he say Fusion I know, I know. You should have given those other guys a hard time. They're the you ones that... <laughs> Okay, yeah, we can definitely do that. We can definitely do that. Um, so why hybrid? You know, we we do have a lot of mid market heritage here at here at NextGen. Um, so we know this customer really well. Um, you know, just high level descriptions. You guys know what, what these customers look like. You know, twenty at least twenty servers, um, a lot of times more, fifty VMs, they're at least partially virtualized. A lot of these guys are, are moving up into the 80 to 90%. Um, multiple application types, which is critical. It's easy to talk about performance now because what Flash is doing from a performance perspective, but there's still a significant need in the mid-market for capacity. They have lots of applications connected. Some of them need high performance. Some of them need high capacity. Um, but the most appealing thing about the mid-market is a lot of these customers are willing to innovate. They are willing to go to kind of the next, um, the next generation architecture, the next generation technology to see what they can get and to see what they can do. Um, and they tend to be a little more aggressive with their technology choices than some of the Fortune 500s of the world. Um, and then if you look at their problems, you know, what are these customers faced with? Um, 
you know, I call them problem child applications. These are apps that they either haven't virtualized because they're afraid of what it's going to do to their virtual infrastructure, or they've tried to virtualize and they've brought it back out and, and left it alone in its own silo because of the performance characteristics and what they need to do. And they're trying to isolate that workload from all the rest of your other workloads. Um, and what's happening now is there's all kinds of new workloads coming into these mid-market uh, customers. You've got VDI coming in. You've got a, a lot of new business analytics that people are looking at. All of that's torquing on their existing storage infrastructure that isn't set up to handle it. Um, if you look at the virtual infrastructure side of the house, a lot of these guys struggle with inconsistent VM performance. They can't get the right level of performance for the right VMs at the right times. And that's a really hard thing to do because virtualization has that, that uh, virtual uh, layer in, in the middle of the application and the hardware. It makes it harder to troubleshoot and everything, there's a lot more sharing going on. So there's a lot more contention. Um, the existing storage is tapped out. You need capacity and performance because of the multiple workloads and the multiple application types. And meanwhile, they don't have a lot of, a lot of whole resources. So if you look at this, you know, this is kind of a new evolving problem set for the mid-market. It used to be about, I need a SAN for virtualization. Now, it's, I've got these new workloads, I'm dealing with inconsistent performance, I don't have that many resources in my storage is tapped out. It's a very different problem set. So if you look at what's available to these guys to solve the problem in the market, um, you know, there's, there's things like controller attached hybrids, um, they offer limited performance, and the one downside of the hybrid architecture is that when data moves around, you get a different performance characteristic. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Because that's making the, the inconsistent performance with a hybrid makes struggling with inconsistent VM performance even harder to deal with. Um, or you can do like an a infrastructure silo. You see a lot of people building out their VDI environments on a silo by itself because VDI basically impacts everything else that it's sharing. So you build out a separate VDI infrastructure, but that makes management and cost of complexity, drives that up. So we saw a huge opportunity to address some of these gaps of the emerging customer problem set for the mid-market, and that's why we chose the hybrid design. Um, so just a, a high-level overview on what NextGen is today. You know, it is a iSCSI hybrid storage array, um, but we use Fusion I.O. that's integrated with disk in an enterprise active-active architecture. So we have two storage processors that are always on. If one fails, the remaining one takes over the other's workload. But the key thing is in steady state operations, both storage processors are contributing to system performance at the same time. Um, and then of course, everything that ties it together is our IO control software um, that's that's built upon the premise to control performance and provision performance out to multiple applications. Um, so we've got some speeds and feeds here. Um, you guys have this presentation on your USB sticks, so uh, I'm not going to go through the, through the details. You can take a look at that. <laughs> um, so here, here's the issue with hybrids. So hybrids sound great, you know, high performance at high capacity, you get the best of both worlds, right? Well, the issue and the ugly truth about the hybrid architecture is actually create some problems that nobody likes to talk about, but they're there. And the reason is, if you look at this layout, you have a volume data that's looked at by some you know, physical host. So it's seeing its data like this. In the hybrid itself, the data is laid out across multiple applications or multiple uh, storage media with different performance characteristics. So that on Monday, this data, as seen by the physical host, given this data layout, we'll see, you know, let's say, 2 milliseconds response time, 2,400 IOPS, you know, with a throughput of 160 megabytes per second. Well, with just standard tiering and caching algorithms, you know, that look at things like frequency of access and what's most recently used and all of those standard computer science terms that define caching and tiering algorithms, what will happen is you'll go through and, and run, a, uh, run a tiering, uh, you'll go run a tiering job or your caching kicks in and you're going to end up in a different data layout configuration. So your, your data is going to be living in different places after that happens. What that means is now your application host, 
because of the data layout, is going to see a different performance level. You don't have control over that. And in this case, you know, I've, I've commented that it's you know, four times slower because you have more data on disk than you had in solid state. Um, and it could be faster. It could be the other way. You, know, you could go faster uh, because of what's happened with, with the data movement. Um, but the key issue here isn't faster or slower. It's that it's unpredictable. And if you're struggling in a virtual infrastructure to deliver predictable performance for a specific VM, this makes it really, really hard. Uh, because what's happening is the performance is controlled by your caching and tiering algor algorithms. It's not being controlled by your business priorities. And that's what we're really trying to do with IO control. We recognize this problem and we've architected the software to deliver a solution for this problem to control provision performance on a specific application basis. Um, the other thing that's interesting, you know, that's kind of the short-term perspective and the short-term solution that we solved. But long-term, we see this model of software having more legs. So as, as you had John and uh, um, David described before, uh, this is why it's so important, um, th the uh, value of the IO control software. Because today, we're solving this problem with, let's say, you know, in this example, I've got SSD and disk. That's the typical hybrid approach. Now, we are memory attached in disk, so um, you know, we're a little different than that. But what's being said is this software can control the performance of a system that has multiple tiers with multiple performance characteristics. Well, what's to say, in the, and we think in the future, there's going to be a fragmentation in the flash market. We do think disk drives will eventually get replaced, but what's going to happen is you'll have fast flash and you'll have capacity-oriented flash. And in that world, the fast flash is going to go faster than the capacity-oriented flash. So you could see a world where a hybrid is PCIe-based or memory-attached flash with some high-capacity flash that's plugged into the disk drive slots. That, that could be one example. The key thing is that there's multiple tiers of flash that will emerge to make it affordable enough to deploy in a mid-market where capacity is important. Um, and you know, who knows in the future, maybe it's you know, phase change memory or some exotic new flash type that's on the front end, and you've got all your archive data or your blocks that aren't being used out in the cloud. To, the only way you can do that is if you have this software where it's driven by your performance targets and your business priorities, moving the data in real time between those tiers. And whether it's flash and disk today or fast flash and high capacity flash in the future, you need this technology to enable an all-flash data center to make it affordable enough for these mid-market customers. Um, so any questions on kind of our approach to hybrid, why we chose it? Yeah, question? So you're saying that the pure flash system is not affordable enough for mid-range market? <laughs> yeah, today... Even, f even when using the duplication, compression, and whatever kind of technology you can use to reduce it, the footprint. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Today, for most mid-market customers, that's going to be too expensive, even with DDU. Um, until, until you see a point in time where, the, where there's a flash media that's cheaper on a dollar per gig than disk, it's going to be that somebody's always going to want to buy cheaper capacity. Um, so what we're saying here is that today, disk happens to be cheaper than flash. In the future, flash may be cheaper than, than disk. But in that scenario. I like that future. I want the flying car, though. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. But in that scenario, the flash that's cheaper than disk is going to be slower than the high performance flash. So you're always going to want kind of two tiers. So the fact that it's disk today is, is kind of irrelevant, right? It's that you have two storage media, one focused on performance, one focused on capacity. Regardless of what is now, the technology the technology. Exactly. Regardless of what's underneath it. Combining those two technologies requires some sort of software to control the performance aspects in a multiple application environment. That's what the mid-market needs. Yeah, once you get big enough to go, these are my performance applications, I'll put them on an all-flash array, and these are my capacity applications, I'll put them on a disk array. Mm -hmm. That may not be true, but in the mid-market where you might have three total storage systems and one guy that runs them, you want them all to be the same so he doesn't have to have three sets of skills. That's exactly right. And, it's, and it's, that's why you need multiple deployment models. We're very targeted on the mid-market needs. That's, that's our heritage. That's what we set out to, to go solve, is the, those mid-market problems. 